All right, welcome, welcome back to the Entrepreneur, the Entrepreneur, Shift the Culture Podcast. My apologies for those on Facebook. We are late today by about half an hour or so, but I'm um, trying to get some stuff sorted out at this new location. So please bear with us. We know you all understand, any of Besides, you all ain't got nothing better to do anyway. <laughs> so um, uh, welcome back. What happened, Travis? Nothing. I say yeah. something wrong? Welcome back, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> I say something wrong? No, 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 no. <laughs> Welcome, and let me apologize to, uh, well, Keisha is back. Let's introduce the people. Let me stop being rude. Keisha Oliver, she was here last week. Hi. She has returned. Hi. And we have the usual, Travis Miller. Hey, everybody. He slipped in. He almost ducked us today, but he came through. Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Reliable. Yes. Travis Miller is back. Um, and last week, Travis, we were supposed to talk about something different, you know. I was so I know. I didn't, I didn't even know. I, I found out after a we topic, did the, A topic was suggested to me weeks before the show, and you know how we go. Mm. We He's just show fly. up. Yeah, we show up. We pick something to talk about and we talk. Yeah. And I just had something on my mind last week and I just, you know, we just went into that. But mm -hmm. the actual topic was supposed to be how do we encourage the next generation of entrepreneurs? Mm. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get into that today. And um, Keisha, I think she's, she's a person that gets prepared. I think she done do research. She done study. Essay. She's at the thesis, yeah, actually. See, yeah. she's at the University of the Bahamas, so she can't help herself. Yeah. Us, we just, just go off the fly and talk off our head. Yeah. But she actually did research on this uh, topic. You're, you're but you can provide us context I, I, and a foundation of yes. what we should talk about. Yes, because me and Travis don't know what we should be talking about most <laughs> of the time anyhow. So you actually study? I Tell didn't us. study, but I was, I was quite interested in speaking about it last week because of the whole like moody's review and then with the prime minister's address and the things that he was kind of talking about in that address mm -hmm. i think they kind of you know worked in tandem but then when we look at what's happening now with um uh Aguilar's recent um kind of announcement about supporting business startups mm -hmm. that's really geared towards young behemoths right. within the tourism sector i think like those opportunities they really plant seeds of hope for a lot of young Bahamians who want to go into um, business but just feel as if they don't have the support from um, society, from the public and private sector that they should. Mm. So that's why I was very keen then, but I'm okay talking about it now as well. Mm. Now, you notice the politicians. I know. I and, they, uh, and almost every politician was talking about entrepreneurship this mm -hmm. election cycle. We yeah. heard it from... Talks. Just about all of the leaders talking about, mm -hmm. you know, encouraging entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. all of that. But are they, do you really believe that they are serious about it and that they know how to execute actually doing that or putting that in place? Oh. Or is it just a talking point well, to win an election? I mean, you always have talking points yeah. as politicians. Right? But I, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think that's really the main subject because I don't think it just starts or stops with politicians mm -hmm. or, or people in government or whatever. I think... Yeah. Like, you have that whole saying, like, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It also takes a community to raise entrepreneurs. So, like, mm -hmm. it takes people saying, hey, you actually... I think the first thing that starts in terms of foster a better community of people of, of the next generation is to for people to um, not feel that they will be judged or people will feel like they are failures. And where does that start, things. though? I think it starts at, like it start at home, having the confidence mm -hmm. to just do different things and ideas at home. Mm -hmm. I think that's it actually starts, it, starts. It starts yeah. with your fr at friends in terms mm -hmm. of like, one, and we talked a little bit about last week about who you hang out with, mm -hmm. but also are these friends supporting you? Do they have those same girls? Do they mm -hmm. have, you know, good habits mm -hmm. um, that are allowing you to be the best you can be? Are, yeah. like, are, are you studying with, like, you know, like, who do you hang out with? Mm -hmm. um, and then as you get higher and higher outside the social circle, now you're like in a broader community where you talk about government. Yes, mm -hmm. now you need, uh, you need entities and organizations in place that foster these different communities. Mm -hmm. Just like what entrepreneur, entrepreneur are trying to do and shift the culture. They're mm -hmm. grassroots for the most part. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, at bare minimum, it allows you to have dialogue with other people trying to do the same thing mm -hmm. and also kind of act as that like safe haven where your ideas could get uh, get thrown out there. Because like you might have a great idea. You could tell a family or friend and they might think it's stupid um, and that kind of shoots it down. Or you could go into a community or a place where they say, OK, that's a great idea. It may not be ready yet, but foster it. Try harder. Try doing something else. And I think mm -hmm. if you have more of that, then you have you build that confidence over time for people to be like, okay, I could do this, I can try this, and I mm -hmm. think that's a good bedrock and a foundation to foster the next generation. I think responding um, to um, your 
whole question or your statement rather about what the contributions are from the public sector, particularly the government. Um, I think that they do things, if you look at the self-starter program, for example, but it's a follow through and it's making sure it's in tandem or it kind of branches out to other areas of society. Right. So say for instance, for me as an educator, I really believe strongly, I agree with what Travis is saying that it really starts in the homes and in these relationships and ensuring we have positive relationships, but it, it also has a very, uh, the educational element plays a very important role as well because that is another environment where you are kind of trained, not just from the curriculum, but from your peers. Like mm -hmm. you use them as a, a sounding board to kind of right. like see where you're headed, to the direction you're headed in. So I feel like the things that they're doing, but the follow through is sometimes what is lacking. They mm -hmm. kind of like give these seeds of, I don't know, scholarships or startup funding for businesses. But then what about training them after? What about following yeah. up? You know, what about that support yes. mechanism to ensure that these things are not only good as a startup, but they're sustainable. And so I think right. that's what is lacking. Okay, so what I gather is yeah. when we speak of encouraging the next generation of entrepreneurship, we're speaking about the government? Is that... No, no, I'm no, not. It's a, it's a, no, it's, it's, it's a, a synergy. It's, it's yes. You don't try to turn yes. it into under the rug. Yes. No, 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 no. I don't talk oh, about it. No, but, but what I'm, I, I'm just trying to get clarification as to who we are speaking of when we're talking about encouraging the next generation. Everybody. 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 Every oh my Everybody. gosh, I'm on Travis's side today. Okay. What do you know? God is <laughs> working it out. No, I, was just, I was just asking. I just get clarification. Yeah. Because every, my thing is, I think a lot of it is going to be um, government led because you need um, certain policies in, in, in place, place oh, yeah, mm -hmm. to do that, yeah. right? Yeah. And if we could just run through something, because my whole philosophy is the government just need to get out of the way. I think the government has their hands in too many things, mm -hmm. and it just stifles the mm -hmm. growth of, of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship yeah. in the country. And the cost of living is too flipping high. Yeah, mm -hmm. And I the agree. cost of doing business is even higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, if we could it's address these things, I think that would automatically um, address the encouragement of entrepreneurship. Because then if it's, if it's easier, if you don't have to go run to four different places just to apply for a business license and then yeah, wait three months you. to get it, then mm -hmm. you would have more people willing to go and get a business license. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a light bill that's not astronomical and it's potentially somebody's salary you could be paying, mm -hmm. then you would probably have more people wanting mm -hmm. to open actual uh, yeah, super, storefront business. Yeah. I think, yeah, right. I think that looks at entrepreneurship from like a very broad spectrum. But when we look at young entrepreneurs, I think of those who are coming up. I think about the future. I don't even think about us or like millennials or anything. Hold on, I think young now. You better catch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> don't put me in that way category now. I know. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, though, we're thinking about the future. So we're thinking about training those who are coming up who may not even know what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. At, for their future not saying that those persons who are employed like for instance myself I'm employed at the University of the Bahamas mm -hmm. but I'm also an entrepreneur on my own right but what what so I tell me based off of that what do you think how do you think we should or we'll go about encouraging entrepreneurship with those y that younger demographic and I think you kind of addressed it He's, you spoke about like okay, the government should step aside and should let other entities kind of like take charge and do what they're doing. And you have some people that are doing that, that they are investing with their different entrepreneur initiatives. Mm. They are doing um, mentorship and internship mm. things in the schools. And we have these things in place. Like, for instance, we're now in the summer months. And so we have that. A lot of summer it's, camps. Yeah, a yeah, lot of summer came, camps. Yeah. Um, we have a, like the summer. Yes, it's government related. But that summer program where I was a part of it when I was 16 or so, mm -hmm. I went into work for Ministry of Health for four weeks during the summer. Mm -hmm. And I think things like that are essential, but we just, it becomes so standardized that we but forget how that meaningful just, the process can be. But isn't that just, is it, isn't that more so job training as opposed no. to entrepreneurship? No, and not necessarily. Well, it, de okay. it really depends how on is the it, camp. How is it? It depends, it depends, where, it depends okay. when they're so placed. A camp that I'm involved mm -hmm. with, Beta Camp, um, we focus on science, technology, engineering, and mm -hmm. math, like STEM so, technologies, right. like mm -hmm. for, for sciences and engineering. Right. Um, and then, like, th uh, the camp that I actually just came from today, mm -hmm. ICANN, is doing a partnership with, with STEM. And, like, um, basically what I did today was run through basic, basic coding with the kids. Okay. I think when it comes to that level of the younger entrepreneurs, 
um, are, and you're not necessarily teaching them directly entrepreneurship, but what you're showing them is the seed of that, which is possibility. Mm. It'd be like, hey, like there is, uh, there's other things I could do yeah. and what I could potentially do now. That gets them thinking about what could be done, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and you go through those things. They may not necessarily get it right now, but at least they say, yo, I did, you know, they mm-hmm. recognize it back out in the wild and say, yeah, hey, I did that. See. And then they kind of spark that intuition. It isn't like anybody telling them they can't do something or even when you get older, it's like, oh, you should only do these things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. More possibilities, the younger ages, then, you know, they feel free and, and giving them safe havens where they could fail because mm-hmm. they don't get it right away. You know, no. they'd be like, they might break something or under- not understand how to do this one thing, mm-hmm. but it, they'll get it over time. And those little inches of confidence kind of build up to bigger things that you yeah. need to do and i think that's important like with yeah. younger entrepreneurs not saying you're old mm-hmm. but younger mm-hmm. entrepreneurs reaching to that next generation because yeah. it's through that inspiration it's through that interaction that they're inspired because they feel that the goals the dreams are more achievable more attainable because exactly. someone who is closer in age to them not their father not their mother not their uncle whatever they have achieved this and th- this is possible and then it's something that pro- probably more innovative more creative so it then introduces them to new scope of possibility, like you say, not the run of the mill right. lawyer, doctor, mm-hmm. you know, business person, um, profession. Job, yeah. Right. And now there's another side of that, especially when it comes to like the summer camps or programs mm-hmm. where government may or may not get involved or mm-hmm. big entities may or may not get involved. Mm-hmm. And in, in order to continue fostering a community or like places where entrepreneurship or creativity in general could happen, mm-hmm. you need funding. Yep. Like, you need to have an adequate amount of funding in these places mm-hmm. in order for, like, the program to continue to run. Because the kids might not necessarily afford to pay for it, or the parents may not necessarily mm-hmm. afford to pay for it. Mm-hmm. But if you have those institutions that be like, hey, we see the value of this. If they could see the value of this and the impact that it's making, then it's more likely that they could go ahead and, and um, support these things. And you need those support. Now, where I think government and other entities trip up mm-hmm. is that those entities that are focus driven to say like what's my return on investment right away Mm -hmm. they're going into it for the wrong reason so like you might have a government program that may give x amount of dollars for this and it may not be a hit or it wasn't like a big public thing and then it's hard to get money from them again or you might actually be the institution that um can't really prove how effective your thing is and it's Mm -hmm. hard for them to raise funds so i think if there's a middle ground that has like a grant or something like that to allow you to explore those different things Mm -hmm. then you could over time consistently build a community mm. Mm. so with the funding because you know that's a number one complaint for a lot of people is especially funding. for the entrepreneurs what now funding the for wild. the entrepreneur who wants to have this startup yeah. is that what you're saying yeah. i mean you do have the opportunities you have that i don't want to n- name companies necessarily but mm. they have initiatives that you have to compete or it's right. based on proposal or grants where you can see and that sh- that should be an important part of their process so they can know whether what they're proposing is viable or not because you know Correct. oftentimes it's like man i know Travis, so i can let him get that yeah. that grant yeah, and yeah, it shouldn't yeah, yeah. be like that and that's all a part of building character i feel personally um one thing i wanted to talk about was like um diversification like why aren't we diversifying why aren't we empowering not necessarily just entrepreneurial kind of like skills but why aren't we believing in the young people i think oh, that i thought you meant we, we don't we, we we need we got too much weave shopping no and, uh, well uh, no yeah that too but i mean why aren't we thinking like for instance me at work you know oftentimes being a young um lecturer people often can they assume that i'm a student and then the type of respect that is um, given to me is just completely that ageism thing yeah like, it's like so, so you, don't, you don't get the same amount of respect as yes you look on and the so when you go into meetings and, w- and then not only being young being a woman being an artist you, they well, yeah, look you, at you, you a certain a way movie, yeah. and so what what happens is i feel is that we don't we will say in writing in theory that okay we want to support be it in education be it in the private sector be it in the public sector we want to support them as a just kind of like filling the status quo but where is the genuine sincerity behind that are we really saying that i'm willing to step down and let this young person take a risk on them and let them see their vision come through and a lot of times that doesn't happen mm-hmm. yeah. and that's the reason we don't like young people in this country no it bothers me yeah it's just very <laughs> upsetting well and that's that's also a result of the system yeah it's a culture system so Mm -hmm. like 
Okay. Is it a the system reason, or a culture? It's a culture. It's a yeah. mindset. I, say, I, I think it's a mindset. I would say system. both. And I'll explain why. Okay. The culture has become, a, why the why a, become a, a system. I'll say why from a, a systematic perspective. It's like, okay, so if you have a company or like, let's say it's usually government run agencies that, mm-hmm. that have people in these jobs and these positions for years, or even in the private sector, like banking and stuff like that, those companies really don't move fast and innovate and allow inclusiveness for a lot of young people, these mm-hmm. people in these positions for years, and they have a very clear track that you could go. So when another person, primarily younger, tries to come, they see that as a threat Always. to take that position because there's no, it's less, it's But that's, you're still, you're still in addressing a, a system. That's culture. Mm-hmm. Because what I it think is, it's, no, it's, a si- think it's a system because companies, if some companies are organi- organizationally structured, but here's, if, you, if you have... Let if me you explain have, what I mean. That you can't have this explain. title at this age. Exactly. Let me explain and what that, I mean. Yeah. To me, a system is something that's put in place, a policy or something that's put in place mm-hmm. for something to operate a certain way. I, I that's mean, a yeah. system. Something that's written down. Mm-hmm. Right. If it's not, we only hire people at a certain age, mm-hmm. then that's not a system. Mm-hmm. What it is, is culturally, we have these feelings that I don't want this young person to take my spot. And so I am not going to show them how to do certain things or I'm going to try to block them in any way I can. That's a culture. Mm-hmm. And I think culture in a lot of instances is more powerful than system. Mm. Because a system is the red light say stop. Yellow say slow, red say stop. Culture is it's after 12 and before 6 and I'm going to get robbed on this light so I run in this light. Nice analogy. Mm-hmm. That's Very a nice culture. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think culture in certain circumstances in this country especially mm. has uh, uh, over uh, uh, surpass systems mm-hmm. and we operate just based off of our culture definitely and we have a culture that discourages entrepreneurship because mm-hmm. we have get, gotten into this mindset that the job is the secure way to go the government mm-hmm. position or whatever it is and then parents are continuing to beat this in their children's and heads that's that's where education comes into mm-hmm. yeah education because we right. teach them to go to find a job we don't right. teach exactly. them to be entrepreneurs and yeah and that's education or like from from your parents saying that or actually just like you, there's no no schools i i believe i'll have mm-hmm. to double check and if someone mm-hmm. could check me on it and do it but like schools that have programs that allow you to build those fundamental things for entrepreneurship. i don't know about program uh a as a part developed of pro- program, but I do know I my um, friend, his son was a part of this after school mm. initiative and every semester he would have to go in and they would give talks. Young entrepreneurs would come in and so I don't know what that is called formally, but I feel like opportunities like that mm. is what is needed because it's right. almost like a form of conditioning. You're teaching them and it's a part of a, not a formal class structure, but it's a part of a structure that shows them there's a cycle of people mm. out there that are doing this right. and it, it, it builds hope. So so they have that there in school. They have the other opportunities in the summer. And so hopefully these things create a domino effect that builds character towards entrepreneurship. Right. If, you go to a, if you go to a good school, they do a great, any great school, mm-hmm. they do a good st- job teaching you the skills. I, mm-hmm. can, I could say that. Like in terms mm-hmm. of, especially when it comes to like our schools, mm-hmm. maybe math and English are you know, mm-hmm. rock solid. Mm-hmm. And so you just need now to have those programs mm-hmm. that said, okay, how to apply these doing these particular things versus mm-hmm. just A, B, and C, mm-hmm. like any type of thing. So and like, maybe that's something that ta- speaks up, speaks to policy. I don't know if they have it here, and I think it was proposed many years ago, but academies, and in London they have it, I noticed that they have a, an academy as opposed to a school, a high school, that is just dedicated towards training students that want skills in business or show skills and aptitude in business show skills technical skills and so they learn the ordinary or the um the standard curriculum but there are these other um parts of other courses that filter a certain level of interest specific to whatever those needs are and it will be business related an academy just for business an academy just for aviation and i think those kind of things are how we can move forward to kind of building a better and just a quick thing mm-hmm. just i mean not i mean it technically is but technically is just a I, shout out he's my to, friend now uh <laughs> shout out to Catherine who's watching right now she works with Queen, queen's college um mm-hmm. does this a center for uh, edge for continual education oh yeah i've seen that um, yeah so like it's initiatives like that mm-hmm. those are like okay you already have that traditional school thing but there's mm-hmm. another thing for adults or on any on any any person who wants to dive into specific technical skills mm-hmm. yeah. that allow you to build on mm-hmm. like this toolkit that you could 
be a more effective entrepreneur, mm-hmm. uh, be a more effective creative, mm-hmm. to just like that. We need more of those. Mm-hmm. And it's important yeah. thing that you say that because I think a lot of the times, even as entrepreneurs, not even entrepreneurs, people who are doing something, we need to kind of constantly be training ourselves. We need to constantly yeah. be um, looking at ways that we need to um, be Innovate. relevant. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And some some of the times in starting out, what happens is that fear comes in and then we decide that we're going to stay on that yeah. nine to five job because mm-hmm. we don't feel like we're going to get the support, the funding, yep. or that we can survive. And sometimes you just really just need to take that risk um, and just see what happens because you will live with regrets. Mm-hmm. Um, fear will always be present. Yeah, always. always. Mm-hmm. It's just, do you have the framework or like a mental capacity to be mm-hmm. like to overcome forget that. that right now mm-hmm. I just need to yeah, how you that's how you react to it fear, mm-hmm. fear itself isn't a bad thing because fear can save your life mm-hmm. that's why you have it mm-hmm. yeah. you know what I mean it can help save your life but it's just how you react to yeah. fearful situations mm-hmm. and oftentimes we cower we cripple ourselves as opposed to liberate ourselves you know yeah. in, in a fearful situation you could be you could liberate yourself and to, to a level that you never even know existed. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't really know yourself until you face some form of adversity. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But people just like the coast for the most part. They, mm-hmm. they don't like unknown situations. Yeah. The comfort just, zone. Yes, they, they, we get stuck in that comfort zone. And that's why I feel um, in order for us to really encourage entrepreneurship long term, it's going to take a shift in the culture yeah, yeah no. hey, i think so too hey. but i think it comes down like we spoke about last yeah. time like from our parents like it's a generational yes. thing like we yes. have been taught to be a part of a workforce not mm-hmm. just in education but like just our mentality if we yes. want to have a earn a living if we want to be have a sustainable right. future we have to work mm-hmm. and the easiest way is to work for someone and i think the fair is the harder way is to do it yourself and yeah. that's and what you happens. know what i like what i try to do is i try to flip that right mm-hmm. because People make it sound as though that's the easy way. You mm-hmm. know, you show up, you know what time you're supposed to come, mm-hmm. you know you're getting this amount of money. It's a blueprint. Blah, blah. Like, you learn yes. to buy into a blueprint. You do. But to me, that's the hard way. Mm-hmm. That's actually the hard way. Some people because it mm-hmm. Some people is easy. Right. But, and, and I mean, and that's not, that's not to say that anything is wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Nothing's wrong with it. If that's, if that's what you want. Because that's, that's balance. Some yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. need people to Be a part of the workforce. If, if you don't have um, workers, you won't have entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. So that's, they play important roles. Mm-hmm. But the way I view it, like a, a job is to me that's like that's scary to me yeah. that's a prison because someone tells you what your time is valued mm-hmm. they tell you what what you're worth in terms of your time mm-hmm. they tell you when you can take a break you have to go to them to get permission to take a leave uh, and and they tell you when you're supposed to come to work mm-hmm. they lay out everything that's supposed to be done for you like to me that's I can't, I can't mm-hmm. deal with that over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. But know then know some I mean? jobs, you know, that's just the standard, I guess, job. Some jobs are more flexible. Some right, jobs you just right. earn a salary and you do, yeah. you right. lay out the blueprint. Yeah. yeah, it all depends. Really depends. Yeah, it so all depends. it is It is open. I think it's just as individuals, we have to choose what's our path. And if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to be a part yeah. of the workforce. And, and for important. some of us, we are doing both. Yeah, and that's, um, that's very important. And know I, what you want, what you desire mm-hmm. out of life, first of all, because not everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur. It may be the hot thing now, but that's not for everybody yeah and to, and to really do that like it isn't anything technical or difficult that you have to do literally just explore mm. options yeah. try new things when Re- you're young research you provide the options to the kids yeah mm. exactly. when you get older st- st- don't just take what you get from face value yeah. or just as is keep exploring continue to explore mm-hmm. different things and then you realize like and you might jump into a career path and be like, oh, solid. And then when you get stuck there, I mean, not stuck there, but when you get there, you get comfortable. Yeah. And be like, hmm, I don't need to do anything. And it's like you trying to bake different things. It's mm-hmm. like you open up this next door and you realize, oh, I didn't know you could do all this. And right. then it gets scary again. And it's like you always, and just like what you said, mm-hmm. it's like, and someone kind of put it in a quote like that too. It's like the, the, the people that will thrive in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years in the information age is people who could learn, unlearn, and relearn. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. always, mm-hmm. and that consistent thing. When something becomes obsolete, you gotta adjust. adjust. You gotta make relearn. it necessary. Yeah. You always have to, but you can't do that unless you explore and mm-hmm. look at the different opportunities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Keisha, now you do more, the most research at us. He give li- us. He lying. <laughs> <laughs> give us some, some points that you feel we need to do as a whole, I guess, as a country, to encourage entrepreneurship. Just some quick 
points that I think for me it's a uh, it's four areas and we spoke about it earlier um for me the four areas can be branched into two sections if you're looking at the individual we need to look at the individual approaching them from home and approaching them in the educational um, sector and then and the broader spectrum of things is groups we need to look at how the private sector and how the public sector can really contribute um, so home it starts with encouraging young people from their young to Yes, it's okay to pick up that crayon, and it's okay to be creative. It's okay to dance, and you can earn a living from that. Um, an education, teaching the students to be competitive, but also to be innovative and not to just be and stay within the box. Because we're getting in a zone now where we're doing these participation trophies where everybody must be equal everybody must be the yeah, same yeah it's just too kind of expected and so those people who could possibly be really creative get pushed into one corner and maybe that's not really what they were supposed right. to do because they were misdirected yeah. because of the educational system that was then supported by what their parents were saying and then when they grow into whomever they want to be as adults we're hoping that the private sector and the public sector can work in hand with providing or writing policies, um, providing initiatives for funding and follow-ups that will help to foster a sustainable um, future for entrepreneurs because I think that's what's kind of missing, the sustainable aspect, the follow-up, the follow-through yeah. to ensure that they're not only just beginning, but they are lasting. Exactly. And I think a key thing with that too, I don't know if that was your last point, but mm -hmm. like it's, it isn't going to happen in a year, no. two years. Mm -mm. Two, it's 20 years. And I mm -hmm. need everybody who, who is a big name to realize that this is a long game. Yeah. And, you're, and you won't, just like a startup, you, won't, mm -hmm. you may not necessarily see something mm -hmm. in your first three to five years. Mm -hmm. But you just have to, it's a little bit of belief and also a little bit of passion and, and vision to see mm -hmm. what this does for, you know, the next generations. Like, yeah. Don't spend, and someone put it this way too, um, I, when I was talking to the director, I can, like you could literally spend $10 a kid now at an early age mm -hmm. versus spending tens of thousands of dollars uh, down the line, mm -hmm. you know, to try to, for them to relearn it or to rebuild these mm -hmm. confidence mm -hmm. or like, you know, to give them opportunities that they may have missed out on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I was saying my last point was the identity thing. I think this runs across the board with us as people. Like, because we don't know who we are, we, uh, we let people kind of put these labels onto us. And that sort of is a very important thing or issue that's um, grasping and imprisoning our young people today. Mm -hmm. And so they don't even get to f figure out what they want. Right. And I feel like that is something that we have to be careful of. I think as entrepreneurs, too, we use that in a way of reaching towards success. We look at what other people are doing. We feel only what they're doing as entrepreneurs will be successful. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing the very thing we want to do because it's not equated to this kind of pomp and pageantry or this kind of celebrity success when really and truly me as just this freelance designer who no one really can see out there making it big on the TV and the radio may be just as successful mm -hmm. as this person who's opening up this coffee house or who's opening up this right. jewelry store and who has a celebrity name attached to them so that you have to be guided in what your success what your goals for success are yeah and success is relative it is you know what I mean it's, it's not just one thing no. equals success. Success is different things to different people. Exactly. You know what I mean? And that's, like you said, it's very important. People get caught up. Too caught up. Judging themselves based on what, what they people are doing. somebody else's success. They feel like, you know, they're supposed to have that same path, that same level of success, but that mm -hmm. may not necessarily be viewed. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of knowing yourself, mm -hmm. self-evaluation. Um, my, my take on it, um, like I said, it's going to be a major shift in the culture. And that's a shift in the mindset. We have to change our mindset. I think many people still have a, a for lack of a better term, slave mentality. Yep. And um, they are just passing it on generation to generation. So in order to encourage entrepreneurship for future entrepreneurs, I think it's going to take our generation and the ones after us, when we have our kids, to encourage them more to be themselves and to try different things and to you know, dabble into different things, to find themselves and find out what it is they actually want to do and not try to pigeonhole them into certain professions that we feel you know, would be respected by others mm. when they look at our children. So we want to feel like our child is doing something, so we want to mm. push them into a certain profession. We need to stop doing that and encourage our kids to do more and encourage them uh, 
um, just build their self esteem. Yeah, build take their risks. Confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we need yeah. to build our children. And then again, with the educational system, I think we need to change the way. I think the whole thing needs to be uprooted because what happens is. We no don't disrespect prepare. to teachers out there. No, it's not. And it's not the teachers' fault because they it's don't a, set It's they, the system. Yeah, they have not put the system in place. They just come into the system and do what Upgrading they're doing. Upgrading the system. Right. Mm-hmm, making so, it relevant. So, what we need to do is prepare students for life i don't think yeah. we prepare them for life we prepare no. them for exams yeah and that's where we're going wrong we need to actually prepare them for life not everyone is going to be an entrepreneur but you still need to teach them life skills like finances budgeting yeah. um, um how to manage mm-hmm. your, yourself uh, emotional intelligence how to deal with situation professionalism mm-hmm. how do you conduct yourselves in a professional environment so these are the things i think need to be uh, um, um, integrated into the curriculum or into the education system to prepare children or students for life and I think you will automatically have entrepreneurs come out of that because I think it's something within us, entrepreneurs. It's just something we can't get rid of. It's just mm-hmm. a bug, yeah. and they're going to emerge. Um, let me run through a couple of these comments because I do a bad job of reading this. Uh, Sandra can say, I reach. Jay is here. Um, who else we got here? Jay says, Greg, you're making Travis uncomfortable. Uh, he it always was, does. It was a talking point for the most part. He always does. <laughs> I like to mess with Travis, man. That's yeah. what I uh, Don Williams says, show them the difference in being a boss and an employee. Broad yeah. statement, I know. There's more work into being a boss, but the benefits far outweigh being an employee. Mm-hmm. Be mentors and open doors. I couldn't agree with that yeah. more. Nelson says, hey. Uh, Don says, yes, know your worth. Don't let anyone devalue you. And then Celeste Hebron says, emotional intelligence, 10 points. Also, that's, that's an important thing. Don't let people tell you what you're worth. Yeah. Because whether someone tells you you're worth a lot or worth a little, if you believe them, they're right. Yeah. And On either one. Mm. Whichever one you yeah. believe, they're right. Yeah. And, and so somebody, don't buy into it. And, that, and that, uh, that always was quite weird to me in terms of like, like don't let people tell you what you're worth. Mm-hmm. And it's so vague because people don't necessarily go up to you and say, mm-hmm. hey, you are this dollar amount. It might be in a form of like people just put you in a box, mm-hmm. like, oh, you're only right. good at this yeah. or that. Or if you That's tell them what you want to do, yeah. they yeah. laugh at you up yes. like, right. do what, but, you know so, what I mean? Uh, when we, so worth is kind of like that big umbrella mm-hmm. of that. They say, like, oh, you could only do this or you're mm-hmm. only capable of doing that. It may not necessarily like a uh, dollar amount no, or right, right, number, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, if, even if you feel that way, if you feel like some people, if you, if you are a type of person that... um you know, finds joy and pleasure of a, a one particular title, then that's fine. Other people don't like, they feel like they could do anything in options. Know where your strengths and, and weaknesses are. And mm-hmm. I think that translates into what your worth mm-hmm. is and could be. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So, good show. We done past time. Woo! Woo! Let's roll out. Once again, sorry, Keisha, we supposed to do this last week, but I think we do a good job this week. That I think we show. did. I think I'm, I'm getting better. Yeah, I think that was, no, man, you're awesome. You also, that's it. I tell Keisha you, you legs, know what you're Keisha talking legs, about. Oliver. Is that my hashtag? <laughs> <laughs> Are you still kidding? I need to put that because you was, and you know, I ain't going to put them Bing, shorts yeah. last week. Wow. Anyhow, thank you for tuning in, people. We appreciate you as always. Thank you for tuning in. We're here Thursday. Like I said, we were late today, but you know, around the time, 4.30 ish, we usually kick off on Thursday. And we appreciate you all for joining us each and every week. And um, we also ask share the video. It don't hurt you. You ain't got to pay for that. If you feel like we gave valuable information, something that people that you know could use, please share the video. Tag your friends in the video. Make sure they see it. And um, also, again, the website is up. Go under the rug.com. All of the shows are up there. And we have merchandise on there as well for, as well for sale if you want to support. Because, you know, these things cost money. Yeah. And we don't real. get paid for this. This is, this is a labor of love. Mm-hmm. And so, um, nah, and that's a right hook of anything. No, oh, no, 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 I mean, it's, it's, it, but see, here's the thing I just ask it for money. We know. actually provide, yes, you're providing just so when entrepreneurial. You, when you skills. spend your money, yes. you actually get Getting something in return. We ain't passing the offering plate, no. even though if you want to give us something, then we could, we'll take that too. We ain't gonna say no, yeah, no pressure, no, no, no pressure, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> but we appreciate it. We appreciate your support in any regard, viewing it, sharing it, commenting are all forms of support, and we appreciate it all. Um, and so we're gonna wrap it up. And you know what we finish with? Losers make excuses. Winners make adjustments. Thank you once again. Peace. Peace.